right, so after swatching these colors out, I figured I would do a quick floral. And I've sped it up a little bit because it's just more palatable for all of you. No pun intended. <laughs> palatable. Um, anyways, uh, my original plan was to go through the colors left to right, um, through the all the reds down to the blues, but I ended up kind of hip-hopping around when I got to the fourth color. So I'm just laying in these loose flowers and I wanted to, it was my first attempt after the swatching to see how these paints behave and how they move. I've got a piece of um, Dick Blick watercolor paper, which is what I use for most of my practice. It's a, a pretty decent quality paper, a little bit lower cost than the other ones like the um, um, Etcher, no not etcher, etcher's expensive. Um, and the one I use all the time that I'm having to brand arches, arch. Um, so I just, I wanted to see how these colors move and I just love the, I mean, I almost call them hyper pigmented. They have such a beautiful amount of pigment in these paints and it's just very rich. I, I, I should have watered it down a little more to show you like true watercolor. But down at the bottom, when I do the vase, it shows a little bit more, more of the watercolor um, features or characteristics of this. But I'm just dropping in color everywhere to see how these colors run together, which is it's kind of fun to practice like this because you are not uptight about where you're dropping everything um, because it's an experiment and you're going to throw it away or, you know, throw it away or cut it up for bookmarks. So I would suggest doing this with your paints anytime you get them uh, because you discover really cover blends that you wouldn't discover trying to paint something specific with a with a finished idea, um, you know, or a, a finished painting at the end. This is like, oh, well, I'm just testing my paints. I'm gonna throw it away. So I'm just dropping color everywhere to see how does this color work with this color? Or how does this color work with this color? Makes it much less precious. Um, but I, I can't say enough right now about my two testers that I've done with these paints. I'm gonna continue to work with them this week a little bit more and, um, and see how I like them. But so far, a definite two thumbs up. I will put a link in the comments for you to, uh, an Amazon link. I ordered them off of Amazon and um, just uh, really happy with them. I'm interested in trying out the other 48 colors. I have 24 and they have 72 total. So um, this, oh, that's, I was trying to use it a little bit more washed out like a watercolor. And then go back in and drop in some color and see how that really, really um, moves very much like watercolor. But what I do like is that it does dry as vibrant. It says on all the packaging and the things that I'm reading that it dries brighter. I don't know about that. I wouldn't necessarily say that, that it dries darker or brighter. It doesn't seem that way to me, but it does not dry lighter. So, um, there we go. I hated that edge. And just, I picked a floral off of Pinterest and just kind of tried to pick the brightest floral I could find and then kind of copied that for my guide of the flowers. Um, let's see. Put a big yellow daffodil in here. Now, this is one thing that I love about gouache is I'm gonna make this daffodil, and in my mind, I had a really pretty daffodil with the bright orange um, part that comes out. And so, you know, moving right along, painting happily, and then I put in the orange, like, looks like a duck bill, and I was very unhappy with it, you'll see. Uh, and I ended up, I want to let that dry a little because it would be a little too runny and not 
taken up enough shape. Um, so I'm trying this pink, which is like a bubblicious pink. My goodness, it is a bubblegum pink for sure. And then we're going to do a little bit of the vase or the stems. Love the moss green. And again, trying to use all my greens in here. And it's still, I mean, those were not soaking wet up there and there was still a little bit of color run. So I'm really happy with the way these paints move. Um, I'm now just trying to use all the rest of the greens work my way around to the purples and the magentas, which I don't think I've touched that magenta yet. But it, like I said, if you get in a set of paints, it's just invaluable to do this a couple of times. Um, it's like taking a car for a test drive. Um, and well, sadly, it's after you buy the car because <laughs> you can't take paints for test drives uh, and return. Well, sometimes you can return them, but generally not. So, but it's like testing out all the feature of these uh, features of these paints without the preciousness of um, working on an actual painting that you either want to sell or give to someone. And it just allows you to play around in a way with your paints that you wouldn't do if you were trying to create something um, giftable or sellable or anything like that. So these loving, these blues and greens and the way they run into each other and that peacock blue is just gorgeous. And the green, the green blues, the greens, they have a huge amount in here. I mean, I spent the first 10 years mixing all my greens. I never bought a tube of green. And with watercolors, it kind of opened up my world to greens, more so than when I did oils. I was perfectly happy mixing black and yellow and blue and yellow, making my greens. But I don't find I don't do that with watercolor as much. Um, love this lilac. Love the not periwinkle hydrangea blue but um just gorgeous gorgeous the way they run in you can see the purple running into the blue and um just a wonderful set of paints and we're gonna drop some dark in here just to see how that I was kind of going for um like just a see-through glass vase. Then I didn't like the way, don't like the way that stopped there. We're gonna take it up, make it a bigger glass vase. And I don't even think I ever put the top of the vase in here. It's just kind of suggested behind these flowers, but I didn't like the way that looked. So with the, where it cut off there. So make it a bigger vase, drop in some more green. And again, just seeing how those move so beautifully. Then I love that gray green, whatever it's called. I have my thing right here and I can't see that shadow green pale. Love that color. And then experimenting with a few more of the dark greens. in a more um, wet on dry fashion. Uh, most of the other stuff is, you know, I was kind of trying to do a watercolory thing. Then I wanted to see how it performs wet on dry, which is fabulous. Switch to a smaller brush. And then kind of, as this was drying, wanted to come back with a few after we put some filler leaves in, um, some details, and then a big purple. Um, they're not snapdragons, but they're one of my favorite flowers. I feel like it needs something in between those two flowers. And adding, it's not really wet on dry, 
um, it's not really wet on wet, it's wet on mostly dry, like the magenta that I put into that red. I wanted to see how long, or checking out to see if the gouache was drying faster than perhaps the, the watercolor pigments. And it's supposed to, but it there still seemed to be quite a bit of time to drop in color and have it move somewhat without re-wetting it. I do know in the videos that I've watched that you can go over dry gouache and it can be reactivated, which is supposed to be one of the frustrating things for people that, that use gouache, like whereas watercolor is, has less propensity to that. In everything I'm watching and seeing, I guess you can, when you re-wet it, reactivate the bottom layer. And so I've not been able to test that out yet, but I will. Um, and that offers its own unique, cool um, things about it as well. Now I thought I would just put the petals in that are closer to me and leave the more transparent part in the back and put some details on all of these. And now where I had in my head this really cool daffodil with the, um, <laughs> the circle coming out and, you know, kind of a side view. I don't know. I'm not good at side view daffodils. I'm better with a head-on daffodil. And this to me just looked like um, one of those things you yell at through in a football game. <laughs> Microphone. And it just kept getting goofier and goofier. And so this is why gouache is, for me, like a dream. Because I really hate this. And I'm playing around with it. And I'm like, oh, ooh, that looks terrible. Can I fix it this way? No. You know what? I am just going to cover it. And now I could have waited for it to dry completely and covered it and these are very opaque and it would have completely annihilated that flower and made it invisible um or the under part but you know I thought oh I'm gonna leave it as kind of a like that should have been there like I actually intended that and kind of go for a looking at this daffodil head on and making it just an orange circle in the middle and so I was much more happy with um, that than the previous flower. And if I had done that in watercolor, well, I wouldn't have because uh, if you're using a really staining color, you can't really get it off of there. And um, the, the beauty, I love watercolors. The beauty of watercolors is their translucence. Um, but I'm really having an awful lot of fun combining the the best part of watercolor like you see the bottom of this vase is very watercolory uh, with the opaque attributes of uh, gouache so I don't know this is like perfect this is like I don't know like not diet cola I'm trying to think of some perfect invention where it's like wow this is a perfect blend of a few you know two things so then I thought well that that back part is nice and, and translucent and go over it with a little bit of dark um, purple. And I can see where illustrators would use this. Um, it's It does dry matte, it does give a different look, but I like it. You know, I'm gonna go back in and fill in these roses. I really like, like the way that one turned out. Um, make this into kind of like a coral bell. That's what it kind of looked like to me. Add some pink, and I'm just trying to get all the colors in there. Um, I don't know that I was able to use the earth tones. I should have, um, but I did not in this painting. And now I'm just kind of throwing some more color in there again because this is gonna end up as bookmarks. And I really love it. I think if you have not tried gouache, um, I had toyed with a few others. I bought the whole line from Dick Blick at one time. These are really glamorous paints. And I wasn't unhappy with them, but this combination of colors is just a really happy, fun combination. So um, if you are looking at, at um, trying out gouache and you've not done it, 
or if you're looking for some vibrant, just happy colors, these this combination is just wonderful. And it wasn't terribly expensive. I, I like I said, I'd put a link. I'm I don't think it's 20 or 25% off anymore, but I would look for it when it is. Um because that's, you know, a good little discount. And now we're putting in just some leaves. And I still feel like it's a little naked at the top. So we're going to put in, when I'm done playing around with these dark, dark leaves. And just seeing, you know, how it, how these lay in some wet on totally dry also fun and more leaves can't ever really have too many leaves especially since I was thinking wow this is super bright and it needs some foliage and more leaves I do like that the Jean um, Brilliant, Jean Brilliant right there, that apricotty peach color with the, the black dot and the poppyish color is, I made it into kind of a poppy. Uh, really love that color, it's very unique. Um, happy with the daffodil-ish flower and putting a few more, just seeing how the detail layer goes over it and I'm really happy with it. Still have a little bit of run. I'm kind of testing as it dries how much um, pigment run you get and it's pretty good. It's not um, drying as horribly fast as I would think it does. And then I'm working at lifting out with this because I wanted to see quiet Winston. My dog is growling. Um, I wanted to see how this color lifts out. And it um, this particular color didn't lift out a ton, but it was enough to make me happy where I wanted, um, how much lift I wanted there. And then I'm just trying to kind of smooth, seeing how I can smooth these edges out after they're dry. And they did move a little bit. You are also supposed to be able to do that with gouache afterwards. Um, soften the hard edges and it did uh, work reactivate enough to soften those edges so I I like that quite a bit um, a little more accent in that bright pink and um, still feeling I think I want a big purple flower stalk over here and I wanted to use my periwinkle not periwinkle, whatever they call that blue color, um, because it's so pretty and I didn't have enough of it in this painting. So we're going to put in, and I should have started at the bottom and worked my way up because I like it lighter at the top, but I'm going to drop in a darker purple. Now it was not real wet the first color that I put in, but I did get some nice color run with with these. And then I always put in the stem at the end there and kind of touch those edges so it also runs in. And I love this paint. So I hope you liked this video. I hope that it was valuable to you. Again, I sped it up because I just kind of dawdle when I'm playing around with all of these colors. I could paint forever um, when I'm doing this. It's just so much fun and interesting to see how the, the blends happen. I hope you take the time to do this in your own studio or at your own kitchen table or wherever you're doing your painting. Uh, it's just um, fun, even if you have paints that you've had forever. And, you know, I just tend to learn something new when I try to do these, these fun, hey, I'm going to use every color on my palette. So thank you for joining me and have a wonderful week.